We haven't been to the Botanic Gardens. Should we go there tomorrow? Could do. So we need wide zoom and something in between. So that's three lenses minimum already. Uh, do we need some lights? So we should definitely pick up some batteries. What about gimbal? Yeah, we need those. So gimbal, in that case we're going to might as well take a tripod. This is slowly becoming a very heavy bag. Are you going to carry it or am I going to carry it? I have a feeling I'm going to be carrying it. How about we go with the stuff in the corner? Do you still know how to use it? Well, how hard could it be? For many years, photographers around the world have been using film cameras like this to take pictures and they were delivering great results. And it's kind of interesting how digital photography actually took a little while to catch up and produce better results. Years have gone by and digital photography has been improving dramatically. Nowadays, we can take very similar photos with our phones. So this is my old, well, old, previous generation phone, a Huawei Mate 20 Pro, and the latest and the greatest from Samsung, which is the S20 Ultra. And we decided to make this video about comparing the difference in generations, you may say. Stick around for the ride and we'll see if the new, the old and the super old are actually that much different. So, it turns out waking up early in the morning is a great idea if you want to test out low light pictures. And we can't really use the analog camera in the morning because it's just simply too dark and our film is only ISO 200. It's more made for a daytime use. But on the other hand, we were able to test out the S20 Ultra against the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Right off the bat, without using night mode, S20 Ultra is delivering much brighter results. On the other hand, with night mode, they're yeah, actually quite comparable. In some situations, during the night mode, Mate 20 Pro is delivering a more black and white pictures when S20 Ultra gets some color into it, even though it's really, really dark. We are in the nature, what can I say? One of the observations we've made is once it started to go a little bit brighter, S20 Ultra actually really struggled to use the night mode. In fact, the normal photos and nighttime photos, in fact, the normal photos and nighttime photos were basically as bright as each other. On the other hand, Huawei Mate 20 Pro has night mode which you can use daytime as well. So it's just gonna take more and more pictures and just bring out the shadows and kind of flatten the whole picture but make everything very very bright so I do like that feature it can sometimes be very useful so it kind of gives you more flexibility on the other hand I think s20 ultra follows the iPhone style where you know Apple knows best So we just came from a waterfall and it's yet another thing that we were testing which doesn't exist on an analog camera. At least not an analog camera that a somewhat amateur photographer like us can use. So slow motion. Slow motion next to the waterfall was kind of interesting where we noticed that the Huawei is actually producing a more crispier foreground and background. On the other hand, the water droplets on the Samsung S20 Ultra seems to be more individual. So I think this is using a much higher shutter speed, therefore is delivering a much sharper water droplets. Uh, on the Huawei, it looks like the water drops kind of blend. It almost looks like it's just doing a little light trails. And this is where our opinion kind of splits. Uh, Christine prefers the sharper foreground background, so she prefers the Huawei. But I kind of like the water droplet effect where everything just kind of freezes, but you can see individual water droplets going down in the waterfall. I'd like to cover zoom capabilities of both these phones and mostly just compare what a generational advantage does mean. 
Mate 20 Pro definitely has a very good camera. At 1x, they both look quite comparable. Of course, the newer phone has a slightly more sharper pictures. But when it comes down to zoom, at 5 times zoom, they're quite similar, but it's clear that Samsung was already edging over. On the other hand, at 10 times zoom, Huawei is becoming very, very soft, while Samsung is still quite sharp. At 30 times zoom, Huawei becomes basically useless. On the other hand, Samsung kind of looks like Huawei at 5 times zoom. So it's basically a one step up. You know, Samsung does have the 100 times zoom, but that looks like the 30 times zoom on the Huawei, and they both look like garbage. It's been a few days, but we received our developed photos from our film camera. Now, let's jump on a PC and review the pictures between S20 Ultra, Mate 20 Pro, and the film camera. Here we have a picture of an orchid on top of a tree branch. And the difference between Samsung and Huawei is actually quite obvious. Samsung has got a much punchier colors, and also it looks a little bit sharper. On the other hand, Huawei and film camera have very similar colors. The only noticeable difference is actually just the bokeh. Film camera at the end of the day has got ridiculous subject separation. In this picture, Huawei has really struggled to get focus. And it might be just because it's a very complex scene with just loads of things happening at the same time. Samsung actually made the picture really, really sharp across the board but it has not created any subject separation. My favorite camera here is the film camera, which creates amazing subject separation and really hones in on that shallow depth of field. In this picture, we really wanted to test out the dynamic range. And Samsung, together with the film camera, is doing quite well. If you look just outside of the patio on the left-hand side, you can still see the shadow that is created by the pole on a picture from Mate 20 Pro, it is just simply gone. One of the things we've noticed while taking this picture is you tend to forget to straighten out the picture because you don't really have any assist features. It's much easier with a phone and a digital camera. Here we wanted to get a close-up in the picture and really fill the frame with the subject. Samsung's done a really good job isolating the subject, I dare to say as good as film camera. Huawei, on the other hand, has done a reasonable job, but the background is still rather distracting. We've had to take a few portrait shots, and it is very clear that Samsung is delivering a better skin tones, but it does it by just boosting all the colors. You can see just above and on the far left, the greenery is just a little bit too green. Huawei maintained a reasonably natural look, and the film camera, well, it seems that we've shot it overexposed and out of focus, so... That jokes on us. Next, I gave the camera to Christine and uh, tried to teach her how to do it. And obviously, it's in focus, it's well exposed, and it looks better than both of the camera phones. In this next picture, I prefer the Samsung photo as it delivers a reasonable background blur and it keeps the colors nice and even. I would actually like for the skin tones to be a little bit more like the film camera delivered but that can be tweaked in editing after. Here we have yet another picture of me trying my best to take a picture of Christine and failing miserably on a film camera. But on the other hand, I wanna give kudos to Christine. While I'm swapping phones, cameras, and everything else, she looks exactly the same in every single picture. Huawei does deliver an overall good picture, but at the same time, you could see that the phone is starting to age, at least when you compare side by side with that Samsung S20. Long and behold, yet another picture where Anton has failed at focusing with a film camera. And they say that the Samsung phone has got bad focusing system. We really wanted to check out the Mac capabilities of these cameras, and it's a little bit unfair for the film camera, as it is using a standard lens. On the other hand, Samsung and Huawei should really be able to do it. Huawei has a dedicated super macro mode. Samsung, on the other hand, has quite a long minimal focus distance, so we had to use a 1x zoom, and we've also had to focus manually, as it wasn't really getting it. Here is another macro picture, and Samsung and Huawei both look very similar in regards of colors. 
Huawei does start to look a little bit washed out in comparison to Samsung, which has very bold and bright colors. Unfortunately, Samsung does have a bit of fringing, and actually considerably more than Huawei. But film camera here has that nice vintage feel. For this next picture, I have a challenge for you. Can you actually tell which one of these pictures is which camera? As far as I'm concerned, they're quite similar. In this picture by the market stall, what I wanted to do is check out how vivid will the cameras make the pictures. And actually, Huawei has done probably the best job in keeping it as accurate as possible. Samsung has definitely bumped the saturation a little bit too much, where the items start to look, become a bit plastic looking. This is another great example where all three pictures look quite similar in regards of colors. Yes, the new phones have a slightly sharper picture, but overall, to a naked eye, unless you start zooming in, you can't really tell a difference. There's been many reports of Samsung S20 Ultra having very slow and inaccurate focus. And unfortunately to say, that is true. It kind of reminds me of a slightly older digital camera, which is of a budget tier. So it kind of does a good job in regards of pictures and sometimes good videos, but it has a bit of hunting. It's kind of like that. We've done a side-by-side -side example where we've compared Samsung and Huawei. It's pull out Huawei phone, take a picture, done. Samsung, pull it out, wobble around, turn around, turn around, and done. And it's still not that great. An interesting observation in regards of video stabilization. Samsung and Huawei are actually doing a really good job. But the moment you start running, Huawei introduces this micro jitters which are very distracting. And Samsung has this sway as if you are slightly drunk. They're still pretty good, but just a little bit of a warning ahead of time. I'd like to summarize this mostly uneven and unfair comparison. Film camera is awesome, especially if you know how to use it which we clearly don't, we've really missed a lot of focus. It can deliver amazing results and it keeps that timeless look. Phones are developing at crazy speeds and they really did bring some incredible results. I would say in some cases, Samsung S20 Ultra has actually delivered better results than what you can get out of a film camera. Two generations, one after the other. The Huawei Mate 20, and S20 Ultra. A year and a half old phone is starting to show its age and overall you should probably stand to the side. The new king of photography S20 Ultra is keen on delivering results and I'm really happy that we've bought this phone. Huawei Mate 20 still maintained a good price to performance ratio so I could definitely recommend somebody on a budget getting one of those. On the other hand, if you have $1,400 in your pocket that you want to burn, you should pick up Samsung S20 Ultra and get the best tech that is currently out there. Thank you for sticking to the end on this one. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up, subscribe to show your support, and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, can we go now? Hold on, I've got it. Manual focusing is time consuming requires a lot of patience. Ah, oh, come on. I'm out of film. This is what we call saving your pictures. Learn kids. Ugh. It's really long. There you go. Hopefully that's properly done. Sometimes this doesn't work. Bonzo.